Now, behind me is the phenomenon physicists call the electric honeycomb. It's been known about for decades, creating that distinctive, beautiful pattern. But my next guest did something no one has done before, which is to photograph the movement of the ions that created that stained glass effect. He's a 17-year-old student from Pakistan, and his work has just been published. Well, Shahir Niazi joins me live now from Lahore, and congratulations. Welcome here to the program. Now, listen, your brain is bigger than mine so in simple terms just explain to me what you actually did and how you did it so the phenomena basically works like this is that we have a needle electrode and a plate electrode and we have a layer of oil on the plate we pass a high voltage through the system which creates ions at, at the needle point which go towards the ground electrode to gain their electrons back but since oil is not a conductor the ions do not get the Get, get the electrons back that easily. So an electrostatic pressure builds up on the layer of the oil and soon it, uh, a point reaches where the oil just moves away because of the pressure and the ions ground at the plate. So what happens is that the, elect the oil does not like that it should be applied so much pressure on it. So everything in nature wants a state of equilibrium and stability. So what it does is that it creates these hexagonal patterns. He the hexagon is basically the most stable structure in the universe found in many other things even. So then uh, the ions pass most efficiently over there to the plate and the oil also is more stable and has le less pressure on it. So and, and, what and I you, did in the, the imaging technique... It's well, well, that's what I want to ask you about, the imaging, the imaging technique, technique is, because I yeah. read you said that you included it because you've been fooling around with it for, for a while, this technique, but you included it for the novelty factor. Yeah. Did you think it might work? Yeah. I was, it was an experiment I wanted to do for a long time. This, it's called Schlieren Photography. It's called, also dubbed as Shadowgraphy. So I had the setup made and I thought that why not put this uh, setup in it because we had the heat gradients related, uh, which I also added in my paper. So I thought, because the method of photography was to measure heat, uh, heat waves, basically. So I had an idea that maybe it will work and when I actually put it in the system, it did actually show me the ions coming down in the form and heating up the residual heating, heating up the air in the process. And, and we're seeing so that, that photograph, how I we're seeing sort of that photograph projected. on our screens. How exciting potentially is something like this? Because I read you mentioned biomedicines, printing. How can this be used, do you think? Exactly, like in biomedicine, we can use this like to supply a drug into a human body and then take it to a target organ without having, to, without having it spread all around the body. And then it's used in printing as it can, like you can uh, control the spread of a droplet of oil uh, using these electric fields. Now, there was a lovely quote I read that you wrote. You made the point that Isaac Newton was uh, 17 when his first paper was published. You were 16 when you actually got the letter of acceptance. I mean, you must feel terribly proud, uh, both for yourself, for your country, you've gone to this international competition to be published. Yeah. Yeah, because like, it was my goal and my mother's goal. Like, it was her dream that I get my paper published at a young age so that I can get this experience that how research is like, handled in the public, how it's handled out there in the real world. So it was like quite an experience for me when there was quite, uh, quite like it's just like when a researcher and his research is re the research is like someone the researcher's child. So having it accepted is like having his child praised. So and it's like quite always, a feeling to have. Ha, have you always research. experimented? Uh, I, I read that by the time you were 11, you were doing online courses because you found classroom work rather boring. Yeah, because like uh, we had to doing all the revision and everything, so like you're studying the same thing over and over again for some time. So you just, your mind wants to do something else. It wants to do something ahead of what you're already doing. And I've had this drive in me since an early age. It was installed in me from my parents. They always used to tell me, think 100 steps ahead of others, and only then can you succeed. Well, Shahir Niazi, thank you so much for taking time to speak to us on today's Global. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, he received that letter.